Tonight we have a woman who came to us. She is Anos of Mami, a leader of a church, wife of a pastor. Her husband is into things that would mess up her own life, her family life, and the church. Which one of them is she ready to sacrifice, the church or her family? Tonight, her confession is right here with us. We have listened to it, and I have with me my wonderful studio audience. And then a great man who is just right for this conversation. When I sit, we commence. Please don't go away. She is a woman affectionately called Osofumami. She's a leader of a church, the wife of a great man. She has a confession. A confession, she says, can break her family and the church. On another hand, it will save a lot of lives. What does she sacrifice? My lady, you're welcome to Confessions on TV3. Thank you so much, Miss Nancy. My ears are wide open, but always my lips are sealed. Let me listen to your story. I'm married to a pastor, a known pastor. Mm. And I'm saying no, no, it's just only Ghana alone, mm. but beyond. Mm. Our church population is something that one would wish to even have for some part of the country. Yeah. And we have lots of people believing in him, believing in our word and everything. Mm. I can't really say where it starts. This whole new behavior or things I'm seeing started. But mm. with everything I've seen on this phone, I could say it has started for long. Mm. We have counseling sessions mostly on Mondays and sometimes mm. we do on Wednesdays. Like most churches. Yeah, most churches does. And when it's very critical and it has to be a really serious situation, he has Saturdays that he opens for you to come see. Okay. And all this takes part in his church office. Okay. You know, as also for Mame, in one way or the other, my man was called before he even got married to me. So after yes. being in his work, of as course. being a pastor. Of course. And most of the times in the counseling, most people who come are women, both single and married, mm -hmm. which he has to attend to them alone. Of course. Miss Nancy, I've never seen any disadvantage and everything going on. So one day I popped up on my husband's phone mm -hmm. and I read a message. And mm -hmm. out of the message is why I did aim to find out what more is going on. Mm. Currently, there was a woman who came to see my yes. husband, the pastor. And from every chat going on, it looks like they are having sexual intercourse. Mm. Like they are making love in the office. Mm. And for more than six, seven, eight, I can't count, chats of messages on the phone, he has slept with every single one of them. Slept with almost all the women? All of them. That come to his office for counseling. Miss Nasi, this is serious. It's no joke. I mean, the women that go for counseling, some of them are young, some are older, some are married. I even have like a 17 years old girl I'm talking about, being part of the people he has slept with. That's and, underage. And I question myself, not understanding what's going on. And from look of things, he gives them money, because money is not something mm. my family will worry about, even mm. think of my husband worrying about it. Mm. He gives them money. Mm -hmm. Some he has even bought cars, lands for them. <sighs> all to bribe them or all to keep it's them in his life or what is he doing with from so many women? chats that I popped upon, uh, I think it's more like the girl didn't expect that happening. I think mm -hmm. she says she's in her 20 something. The mm -hmm. girl didn't expect that happening. The girl I'm talking about is more like my goddaughter, mm -hmm. someone who looks up to me in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from he having everything with her, he made her know it's more like a quantre. So, so he it, is a prophet. Yeah, he's a prophet. Wonderful. He gives miracle, he gives prophecy. Mm -hmm. There's some things that we do just pure prophecy, having people falling. Now, even doubt what he's doing, if it's called for, from God or from wherever it's coming from. You fell in love with his giftings, didn't you? <sighs> I fell in love with a man of God. Mm -hmm. A man when I met knowing he's doing the work of God and knowing mm. I sing as well at church. Oh, perfect combination. The preacher knowing, man and the singer. So right now, what is your challenge? My challenge now is when I saw the whole thing, I confronted him, thinking he would feel all sorry. 
say he won't do it again, or maybe, you know, a normal lie people say is the work of the devil or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. But trust me, he feels boldly strong about that. He didn't see anything wrong with it. Be like, we give what to Caesar to Caesar, and at the end, there's his own way of uh, doing things, and it's not that bad. Some come and he yearns for the body fantasy, and he couldn't. He, he didn't feel any sorry. Hmm. So people come to him with their challenges, sometimes with even their confessions, for him to give them divine counsel. And he ends up having these women, the young, the old, the married, and the unmarried. This is also for mommy. If she comes out with this conversation, this confession, she is either breaking her home and the church or everything together. What does she do? This is Confessions on TV3. Martin Sematiatiati, Nawei dear. People, join me in the studio with my studio audience and, of course, my counselor. What do we do tonight? You are welcome back, and I'm happy to have you, ladies and gentlemen. You just listened to her confession. Which one is she sacrificing? Should all the women know that he's not just doing it with you, he's doing it to the next one by you? Should the mothers know that a sofa is not just doing you, he's doing a girl as young as your daughter? How should she handle this without breaking the church of God, breaking her family life in the process. This is her confession. Your name and then? All right, so I'm Philip. Hi, Phil. Hello, Miss Nancy. Great. Um, so this situation is a critical one. And um, right. I think for me personally, not to break a marriage or to bring it out there, mm -hmm. um, the ladies that the, the man of God have done things with in a church, mm -hmm. I think she should gather them together, have a short meeting. She's a woman of God herself, isn't it? She so, is. Um, as a woman of God, at least God can speak through you to speak to them. Mm. So I think from there, they can do anything possible to make the man of God realize that what he's doing isn't right enough. So she shouldn't um, spoil the marriage or spoil the church. All she needs to know is, it has happened, and it has happened. So she should gather the group of ladies. The okay, of so announcement. Everybody that my husband has slept with in this church, raise your hands. <laughs> we are going to have a program right. tonight. Yeah, um, how possible? Yeah, Miss Nancy, first of all, how did she know that he had sex with them? Even though, yeah, no phone. She they, found what, it on the phone. What? She saw one, and then she got more curious and went through it, and it looks like what it is exactly something. What exactly did she see? Well, she saw messages, like she said. She saw c mm -hmm. communications. She saw giftings that were being appreciated by the receivers of the gifts. But that doesn't mean they, had, I mean they have slept or something. What exactly did she see? Well, let me not take the wind out of her sail. She is still right here. So my lady, Osafumami, what exactly did you see? Because from our studio audience, just seeing messages and seeing the receipts of uh, Thanksgiving does not mean he had any physical intimacy with them. We need more proof. Thank you so much, Miss Nancy. As I was talking to you, I actually wanted to keep this. I didn't want to see this on air. But between God and man, after I saw the messages, there was a time I went there on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I caught him red-handed mm. with one other lady. Married or single? No, she's a single woman. Okay. She's a single lady who is more of like the leader of the youth, the church youth. Oh. So I went in and automatically her top was on and she was in brazier oh. with her boobs showing. Oh. What would a young lady at that age be doing there that woman with a married man like my husband? Is, 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 is there, I mean, believers are here, right? Is there no acquaintance that entails you to take off your blouse and leave your bra on? No, no hell no. way. Oh, perhaps, no. <laughs> perhaps they are preparing to go and then baptize or something. <laughs> now, even with baptism. <laughs> no, they baptize in a pool. There's a swimming pool. For you know, there's a swimming pool behind the house. 
Are you just trying to play the devil's advocate? No, no, no. Thank Miss you so Nancy. much. Thank you so much. Yes, my lady. Yes. In my church, we have a set of team who does baptism. My husband is the head pastor. Yes. We have sub pastors under. Mm. So he's he not just a normal pastor, like the head. Involved in the baptism. And we all know how baptisms are done. Long white robe, absolutely so, covered and all. Thank so you. So with this, the question is, what is a worry right now? Is it the number of people he did with, or because he's not doing with he, I mean with her? The, the man was physically intimate with married women, younger women, older women, all that came to seek counseling in the name of the Lord. My lady, your name and then? My name is Esther Nakoko Ayi. Hi, Esther. Uh, before I say anything, you're looking dashing and mm. beautiful. Her confession is quite intense. It is. Coming out to see it would eventually, if care is not taken, probably destroy the marriage mm -hmm. or the church reputation. Mm -hmm. But then it's a good thing because it would help people. Now, yes, the husband has been having intercourse with other ladies mm -hmm. who are probably influential people in the church. Mm -hmm. She has found out. She has spoken to the man and he's a bit nonchalant about it. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But I believe ladies also have their space in the church. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to hit the nail on the head by going for the ladies he has done it with. Mm -hmm. But raise an awareness that this is not good. Mm -hmm. What you guys are doing, if you know it's wrong, then desist. But if you don't know, then it is wrong. How is she raising that awareness? We give her a microphone to preach. Not necessarily. And she but just know, decides to preach about <laughs> immorality in the church. Well, we have, in most churches have the ladies' space. So we have, I know for the Presbyterian, women's, they have Imeko. Yeah, women's Anglicans, ministry. we have Mother's Union, mm -hmm. Women's Fellowship and all that. Such meetings. Take you advantage. can talk about it. And people actually listen. You can twist it in a way that it would raise that guilt factor in the person. Mm. So that if the person is deciding to be like, okay, fine, I'm doing it, so what? That thing that you said will make the person start feeling guilty and then will stop. For your husband, he can do it, but then when the people are not responding to his energy, he, he would stop. Wonderful, wonderful. If the people are not responding to his energy, he doesn't get to send. Now is the time I bring in my very wonderful counselor. He is Mr. Ugo. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ugo Chuku, put your hands together for him. Uh -oh. That's the man. That's the man. Hi, good to Nancy. see you. It is so good to see you again. <laughs> Please, Thank your you. seat. Hi, Thank guys. you. <laughs> Thank you, counselor. Thank you it's for good to me. have you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, tonight you are a counselor. But <laughs> <laughs> beyond tonight, what do you do? Who are you? Mm. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah. Yes, I am a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I'm a law lecturer. Mm -hmm. And I'm a relationship consultant. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Isn't he right? <laughs> Isn't he right for this conversation? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Counselor is seated and he needs to hear the confession and we are right here a man who has a lot of knowledge to share let's take the confession when we come back we ask him how can we help this woman and more you know as also for mommy in one way or the other my man was called before he even got married to me so after yes. being his wife of as course the pastor. of course and most of the times in the counseling most people who come are women both single and married mm -hmm. which he has to attend to them alone of course Miss Nancy, I've never seen any disadvantage and everything going on. So one day I popped upon my husband's phone mm -hmm. and I read a message. And mm -hmm. out of the message is why I did aim to find out what more is going on. Mm -hmm. Currently, there was a woman who came to see my yes. husband, the pastor. And from every chat going on, it looks like they are having sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. Like they are making love in the office. Mm -hmm. And for more than six, seven, eight, I can't count. Chats of messages on the phone. He has slept with every single one of them. Slept with almost all the women. All of them. That come to his office for counseling. Miss Nasi, this is serious. It's no joke. I mean, the women that go for counseling, some of them are young, some are older, some are married. I even have like a 17 years old girl I'm talking about being part of the people he has slept with. That's and underage. 
And I question myself not understanding what's going on. And from look of things, he gives them money, because money is not something mm. my family worry about. Even mm. think of my husband worrying about it. Mm. He gives them money. Mm -hmm. Some he has even bought cars, lands for them. <sighs> you are welcome back. We have uh, listened to her confession. Hmm. <laughs> Let us talk about the power of a leader, not necessarily a pastor, but any man that leads a people, a lecturer, yeah. a pastor, yeah. a political leader, a teacher, any man that has the ability, manager, yeah. to lead women especially. Mm. What are the challenges that comes with it? Hmm. Well, first, you know, that kind of person has a lot of influence. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he's someone that is charismatic, Mm -hmm. Charismatic as well, yeah. carries himself well. Well, you know, you're very attractive yes. to women. Yes. It doesn't matter how your face looks. Mm -hmm. You're just very attractive to women. Mm. Doesn't you know. it, it doesn't matter how your face looks. It doesn't matter how your face looks. It actually doesn't matter your physique. Wow. You know, once, once that personality is tight, mm -hmm. once you carry that influence, mm. once you're charismatic, mm. definitely you will be very attractive to women. Now, when they're unable to manage it well, and when you're not helping them to manage it well, things like this are bound to happen, mm. you know? So it is a situation. Um, now, I'm not holding brief for the pastor, mm -hmm. but clearly, if he also did not prepare himself for the kind of um, fame he has now, he will become very vulnerable as well. Mm. And these things are capable of happening. So it's a two-way traffic. It might not just be about him, it's also about, you know, the, the, the women, the women. chosen yes. to lead. Yes. You know, so if those situations arise, uh, what's going on right now is almost inevitable. Yes. There is a psychology of people falling for other people's confessions. So, for instance, I sit in the confession booth, and thankfully I'm surrounded by people, <laughs> so I'm safe. But for most people, after listening to the confessions of people, they tend to want to do the very same thing they came to confess. So a married woman comes to a pastor and says that I've been cheated on my husband and I don't know how to stop and I really need help. And the next person that she cheats with is the pastor she went to confess to. Yeah. What is the psychology behind that? First, it's about need. Mm. And it's about attraction mm. like i said earlier the woman is vulnerable but you've come to confess to a man whose issues you also don't know no he also might be vulnerable he also might have his struggles mm. and when you begin to speak he's got imaginations mm. he's got his struggles yeah and before you know it one thing leads to another the job of a pastor that engages in counseling, it's not a very easy one. Mm -mm. It's not a very easy one. And so most of the times, they are also advised to build certain walls around security. themselves. And security. Not expose themselves so absolutely. much. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is very important. And when you are speaking with the person, know what the limits are. And Don't if, ask for sordid details. Well. So you went to him and what happened? He says, I took off my blouse and you ask what happened. What are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> you already know that it happened. You yeah. Know? But then some of the times there are details that you might need in order to tell her, okay, these are the danger signals. These are signposts you must avoid. These are things you shouldn't do. But then there are some details you don't want to know because, you know, these things create images. Yeah. They create images, and when you haven't dealt with your own issues mm -hmm. and you're being you fed with stuff like this, okay, it destroys you. And so the other thing I say to pastors mm -hmm. is uh, you, you know yourself. You know where you are, irrespective of what people call you. Mm -hmm. Please, don't say you can cancel if you when can't, you if you're not have ready. The ability. Yes, you've got to be ready. And if you're not ready... Please, you know, move them to somebody else or tell them to go see another pastor. <laughs> but don't set yourself up and, 
Know your limits. Uh, this is Confessions on TV3. The conversation is getting very exciting and very educative. We will be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. This is Confessions on TV3. My name is Miss Nancy and Mr. Ogo is here with me. And tonight the confession is about the church and also for Miami. Now in this situation, let us ask her. Sof Mami, are you still there? Hello, Sof Mami. Hello, Miss Nancy. Great. Thank you. So did you ever try to sit with your partner, husband, during these counseling sessions? Yes, I, I was actually helping him from a start. Mm -hmm. But you know at that point whereby you have full trust on your husband yeah. or your partner. And secondly, there are other sides of things in the church that I also picked that to be the center of where I will also be concentrating on. Okay. So sometimes we have sessions whereby we have lots of people coming for counseling. Mm -hmm. He can be doing some, I can also be doing some elsewhere, because I also okay. have my office okay. at the church. Okay. So that was what brought the fact of he having a, his own space and you uh, dealing with yours. some that wasn't present. Because there were those that wanted to speak with you and those that want to speak with him. Yes, please. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> the, the gentleman is worried about you. Did you ever, were you ever exposed to a man who found you attractive or tried to hit on you during those sessions? And uh, none I can recall. Wow. Yes, Usually the recall. women are spared, right? <laughs> uh, none I can recall. Married it, women. It, it does depend. It does mm. depend on, on, the, on the people that you're dealing with yes. and, and the limits that you set around yourself. Mm -hmm. Some of the times she might be the one that is gifted with the, with the ability to counsel. Yeah. But the husband is doing it because he's the head pastor. Head pastor. And I don't think you should do the job if you're not called out for that it. That you have said. So, so that might be his issue. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he's also a son of man. Son of man, You know, man, with indeed. his struggles. Indeed. So, so indeed. that might be the issue. And the other thing is that, sincerely, when you're talking about counseling, it, there's that secrecy, that, that privacy, can, yes, you know, the confidentiality yeah. is something you can... If I come to can, you and there is another person there... Absolutely. I won't be able to open up, Yeah, you know, and yeah. so that, that might be an issue as well. Yes. From the audience. My name is James Clark. You can call me Alafia. <laughs> you see, in Akan, we say Ensem Sisi. Ah. And then there's also Enye Hu Enye Tain. Mm-hmm. We have individual differences. Yes. Like Mr. Ogu said, when you were getting married to this pastor, you were a singer in a church, or he later brought, he brought you from somewhere, you came and into you the church, this. and then you started singing. Mm -hmm. Like we always say, how well do you know your husband? Mm -hmm. How well do you know your husband? And the type of ladies that are in the church, nowadays when we go to church, the way some of them sit in front of that, in front, the front lane, mm -hmm. the kind of ladies that come to counseling, mm -hmm. how close are you with some of the, the young pastors that are related to your, 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 your own Working husband? Working with a husband. What is the relationship between you and this kind of gentleman? And I want to ask our sister, during their courtship time, mm -hmm. when they were having the marriage sessions, throughout the church period, you know, initially you'll be giving the man all the attention, like she said, mm -hmm. the good sex, good meals, and all that. But during, whilst the church is growing, was she paying attention to all her to duties? the physical needs of the man. Because, you see, men, and this thing, I've been championing this course. Women shouldn't think that you own a man alone. That thing, one woman to one man, is not true. Mm. <laughs> Any man who, who is wealthy, who has enough resources, can get married to two, three, four wives 
and take good care of them. And she should be mindful. She's thinking that, oh, the man is spoiling other homes. No. If, I'm not saying what the pastor did is right. But what the pastor did is also helping some homes. He's buying some families' cars. He's <laughs> buying them houses. He's feeding some families. So me, I always say, Bema or Wosika. Ninsasu e busunye bisu. Eme busunye ni nina ye fine. But for you to judge the man is between him and his omnipotent God. So for you as a wife, it's all right for this man to be sleeping with anything in skirt that comes to him in the name of the Lord God? You see, she keeps saying, on your mother, on your mother, he keeps sleeping with them. Mm -hmm. Have you really find out? He has been doing it. Why do you, in the first place, as a, as a, as a wife, get deep into your husband's phone? That is totally wrong. Women shouldn't condone that. Wow. They shouldn't do that. It's wrong. That is his opinion. Osof, mommy, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Miss Nancy. How have you been attending to the needs of your husband? In fact, how often do you have sex with your very big church? Miss Nancy, when I and my husband met and we started, I wasn't part of his church and he wasn't a big pastor as he, he is, is now. now. And most people even come to our homes, they'll be like, hey, also for my pa no address, you see. Miss Nancy, mm -hmm. if it comes to my relationship and stuff, Miss Nancy, I don't joke with it. Mm -hmm. I know how obsessed young ladies are and how others will want this. So for my husband, unless he doesn't call for sometimes he's even tired, I give it to him. Mm. Miss Nancy, what's really brought my mind to everything going on and even me taking the move of checking his phone? Oh, Miss Nancy, they respect me in that church. Yes. I'm a mother figure to the youth. Yeah. But for it to get to the point whereby I have youth talking, giggling when they see me coming around, mm. got me to start thinking. Because mm. some young ladies put their shoulders up just like me because they're also using the same thing I am using. Oh. I've not starved him of sex. And he's still taking it. He's still taking it. And taking extra, I mean, extras from outside. Even when I saw the text message on his phone, business, I started giving him more and more. Hmm. So, um, There's an ethical dimension to this. She might not be the problem. If the guy has that struggle mm -hmm. and hasn't dealt with it, mm -hmm. and you know, that's another problem that a lot of people have, with, like pastors. Mm -hmm. The moment you can prophesy, mm -hmm. you say you're anointed, mm -hmm. you begin to feel immortal. Mm -hmm. You begin to tell yourself that you can't make mistakes. Yeah. And even when you make mistakes, you feel you can justify them. Yeah. And once you get into that situation, you're gone. Nothing can change yes, you. Yes, and that's where he finds himself right now. I, I don't think the problem is with the woman. Oh. No, no, I mean, let me ask. Is it possible for a healthy man, spirit-filled or not, to find a woman and says, this is it for me, and not ever look outside, and not ever need nor crave for another woman. Is it really possible it under is. the sun? It's possible. <laughs> it is very possible. It's very possible. Uh, it is yeah. very possible. It's and there are so many, there are so many yes. men doing it. It's very possible. It is very possible. And there are so many men doing it. Sometimes we don't see those men because we are not in the same circle with them. With them. But when you belong to their circle, you see that that is what they do. I mean, I'm talking about popular men. I'm talking about the kings mm. of our time. Kings as in traditional kings or yes, just stars? Yes, leaders. Leaders. Big men. Mm. Those who are exposed, those who have meet all manner and kinds and types of women, short, tall, dark skin, light skin. Everybody's smiling at him, hugging him and squeezing him a bit closer. Me and smelling like heaven all the time. Okay, so on the face of it, yes, there are men like that. Number one, because even if they're ants, they haven't been caught yet, mm -hmm. you know. But, <laughs> but definitely, there are men with their principles and the choices they've made in life and the values that they hold on to. Yeah. There definitely will be men, men like, like that, that in those circles and on those levels, yes. Well... Miss Nancy, um, there's this point in, in life that when you read too much... Mm -hmm. You begin to see wrong to be right. 
<laughs> this man is a very well-read man. Oh. He still sees wrong as yeah. wrong. Is it sometimes you got the Bible itself? When you read, it's right now. That's what I wanted to find out from us. Um, um, the Asof lady, Mami. Asof Mami. First of all, what is her understanding biblically when it comes to polygamy? What is her faith when it comes to polygamy? I was, she should just go ahead and then advise the husband to marry more instead. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. But, if, but the, the issue really is not polygamy. The man is being promiscuous. He's having a struggle, mm -hmm. but it's not polygamy. There's a difference between so polygamy and promiscuity. So if he had, yes, I mean, than more two, than one three, family, yes, with more than two women can. at his disposal as wives, then he will be a decent man. He's, he's, he will operate within those parameters. His, his, uh, his, his, his problem is not the availability of the woman, but the fact that he hasn't been able to manage his sexual control or sexual urges. Uh, I mean, the, his probably is, uh, problem is probably um, variety as spice to life. So I, my woman is available, but she's always serving me jollof rice with goat meat. It is nice. It is tasty, but sometimes I want some ampesi, and other times I want some banku, so, and other so times you, some fufu. Yeah, so, but if you if you if you follow if you follow her story, yeah, you notice that from from I don't know if she's ex exaggerating because of mm -hmm. of her pain. Yeah. Okay, but from the way he's speaking, imagine that you're you're looking at a church of five thousand people with three thousand women. Mm -hmm. it, it's possible that he slept with over twenty. Mm. More than that, according to. I'm, I'm just you know. Yeah. Th yeah. That would not be because the women are, Variety. you know, yes. Yeah. So, so if he had four wives or five wives, he, he still do. will be doing so it. Counselor, would you say that, that would be his struggle. So, Councillor, would you say that he's just trying to avoid responsibility? He's not trying to avoid responsibility. He, has a, lacks... he has a struggle. He has yeah. a problem. He has a problem that he hasn't been able to solve. He lacks discipline. He lacks discipline and he has covered it with the anointing. Mm. That is the struggle, you know, and until he deals with the floor, he will continue to do it. Even when he travels, he will meet other women mm -hmm. and he will continue to do it. Mm -hmm. you know. Let me take this break. When I come back, we will help her. You are welcome back to Confessions on TV3. Let us go out there and ask. This is Anos of Mami. The pastor is working with women, by women all the time, <laughs> and also his anointing is relevant to women, and he's making good use of the women. What do the streets have to say about this? For me personally, um, I will not react to it quickly, yes, because um, I think all in the name of love, and if you claim you love someone, Sometimes you need, you need to give the person the benefit of the doubt, you get it. So I'll confront him and know his take on that. Yeah, so trust me, I, I don't think I'll take it in a, like a fast distance. It will be in a slow something, a slow thing. For me, you know, I think say, the pastor will be cute, will be a nice person. So I think say, the church members, they crash on the pastor. So. If, it be me, if I be the uh, wife, uh, I will leave him and go, you know that. I will just ignore the fact that my husband has been, you know, sleeping with the members of the church because if I should act at the moment, it will bring a lot of chaos between us and then even inside the church, okay, and our family. So I just ignore the fact that he's been sleeping with the people of the church and then I play my daily routine, like as a wife, cook for him and do everything for him. If he's well matured and he, he, he thinks critically, he will realize that no, he's very guilty and he will have to work things out, you know, make everything cool. So I'll consider the children first before taking any step. Because I don't want to do something that will affect the children. So I'll continue doing my role, playing the role of a married woman. A married woman, yeah. So I think my own is on the children. Forget about society, I will protect my home. Well, that is what the streets had to say. We're back in the studio and um, they have something else to say. What did you want to say, my dear? Okay, so looking at um, this situation now, I think um, she should threaten him with a divorce, a divorcery. Um, mm -hmm. With a divorce, it's going to be scared that, okay, if it comes out, the people are going to be like this, that they want to know the reason behind the divorce. So mm -hmm. I think it should just threaten him with a divorce. 
Mm. Yeah. Tell mm. him that if you don't mm. stop being all over the place, I'm walking out. Divorce is always not good for men no, with big images, right? That, that, that's, oh. that's the first one. It's not good for the image. Yeah. But, but the thing is, if it is a struggle, yeah. I keep saying struggle. Struggle. If it is a struggle, you threaten him. He'll tell you, I'll stop. Mm -hmm. He's just going to be more discreet. But he's mm -hmm. not going to stop. Mm -hmm. There is a root to the problem. Mm. And what she needs to do is find a way to solve it. You know, uh, telling him I'll divorce you. You leave, another woman will come in. Of course. And if it matters so much to him, he will just, he will just keep it a secret. Yeah. Change his passcode, uh, change whatever it is the that phone. is on his phone, everything. And you won't notice anything any longer. I know. mean, they're very smart ones who stop doing it in church and go outside the church. Absolutely. You know, so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. And I want to find out, as a man of God, at what point... Do you refer certain cases? Because I believe that some of the pastors, they don't have what it takes Absolutely. to counsel. Absolutely. Certain. And they claim they are counselors Absolutely. using their life experiences. Mm. I'm not against that, but at what point do you draw that thin line and then refer some of the, your, your to church professionals. members to professionals? Mm. The underlying word is professionals. <laughs> Thank you. I think that, Mr. Ogu, you need to speak yeah, to this. That is, that is a very important mm -hmm. um, statement, an important mm. issue that he's raised. You, you can't do everything, mm -hmm. you know, but there's this, especially in charismatic churches, mm. there is this fear that when I refer, I well, lose no. my people. Yeah. You know, so, so out of that need to continue to be relevant, they do things they know they shouldn't be doing and expose themselves to more challenges mm. in the process. Mm. But what he said is profound and it's very important that people do that. Mm. You know, if you know you can't do it or build a stronger team and bring in more people that can, mm. that can cancel if it's so important to your ministry. But don't do things you can't do. And, no. you know, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Mm. Don't work here. Not with the women. Nah, Not nah. with the women. You can <laughs> do it with the women. Uh, when it comes to the women, the Bible didn't say run. It says it's flee. flee. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Now we're wrapping up the show. We need to give her solutions. Yes, ma'am. How does she handle her husband going forward? Mm. What is past is past. Yes. But going forward, how is she going to keep her husband sane, disciplined, and keep the church without hurting herself and her family in the process? Hmm. There are a number of things that she has to do, but one of the things um, would be to find out why she even wants to handle the situation. Is it because she wants to protect her marriage? Mm. Is she feeling bitter mm. about all the things that have happened and just the fact that she can't have her man to herself. Out of mommy. And or is she trying it's to protect nice the church? What is the motivation for you to come on confessions today? Do you want to help your church members? Are you a bitter lover because you've been betrayed by your husband? Or you are a frustrated Christian because you are seeing another man of God do exactly what the Bible advises against? Which one? For which reason are you here? Miss Nancy, I have lots of the youth of the church believing in me. Mm. And I have events where I go to places, I talk to people. I can't let those people down. Mm. I can't stand by something that is, I know is wrong and still stand by it because of my faith of love of knowing that is my husband. Mm. I need the right thing to be done. I'm confused. I don't want to cover what he's doing, but in one way or the other, I want to find a way to solve it. I'm yeah. torn between the two ways. Wow. That's very honorable. It is. Yes, Beautiful. Very honorable. Beautiful. And uh, the truth of the matter is first, there's no easy way to handle this. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely scars will happen. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, in, in, in her story, she hasn't actually asked her husband what he really wants. Yeah. What, what is the issue, sir? Okay. Mm. What is the issue? Now, when he begins to speak to the issue, she will also make notes because, I mean, she's spoken like a counselor as well. Yeah. And she does counseling. Yeah. So, so she needs to sit her husband down and engage him. Know why know he why keeps on doing that. He keeps on doing it. At some point, she will find the reason. 
Is it just that he has found an opportunity to prey on women mm. or is he having a struggle? Mm. Now, she needs to be able to look at her husband and say, guy, you need help. Yes. And the moment he understands it, then we go to the next go level. Forward. You know, but if it comes to a point where he's not listening, mm -hmm. the church has an administrative setup. Yeah. There are trustees Board and there are leaders and all of that. Elders, deacons yes. and deaconesses. And every pastor, every pastor, every man actually mm -hmm. has what I call an accountability partner. Yes. There is definitely somebody that calls you and say, hey, Nancy, sit down there. I want to talk mm -hmm. to you. And you listen. You will. It doesn't matter how big your head is. Mm -hmm. You know? And so she needs to engage Fa them. That accountability Absolutely. partner. Absolutely. That leader, that father figure. Yes, ma'am. It could even be his parents. Absolutely. If I mean, you should trust this family. Yes. If you have word your own, I'm Ibika. <laughs> yeah, you don't I get understand. that one. <laughs> <laughs> so when, well, even when your family members want to hurt you, mm -hmm. it isn't as bad as someone Absolutely. from outside. Absolutely. So they will keep your secret yes. and they will help you Absolutely. grow. That now, I mean, helpful. can she recommend that um, the church has decided that for, for security purposes, uh, CCTV cameras should be planted in all the offices, <laughs> including pastors, <laughs> so that at least he knows that people will be watching. Uh, that, that, would be, that would be too dangerous. That, that would, would be, be too, too dangerous. dangerous. Not just for the pastor, but for the other people. People that are coming. Yes, and of course, you see, in managing it as well, and that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons I was asking if she was bitter. Yes. In managing it as well, realize that there are so many other marriages that are stakeholders in this matter now. Mm. And they might not be ready for the solution you're bringing. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so you need to take it one step at a time. And then the withdrawal will begin to happen. happen. Yes. Wonderful. Can, can, can it, uh, I, yeah. I welcome to you, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Can, can she also suggest that going forward, let me be a part of every counseling session? That mm. this is the policy of the church that it's the pastor and his wife that receives you at counseling, not just the pastor? I, I don't think it's a good idea. You know, there are people that will just stop coming. There are people that will never speak up and speak out. And they might actually have needs. They just that won't be able really, to speak. Yes. Yeah. I think the first thing they should also do is tell the man to stop having counseling sessions. Yes. He's not for ready the time for it. Being. Yes. Because he's not made for counseling. No, even if he is, he's not ready yet. Mm. There, there are some mm. cooking that he needs to go through, go through. And he hasn't received it yet. So, first solution, you suggest to the man that, listen, this is not for you. It's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt a whole lot of people. Let us put a stop to the counseling because, of course, you've not had official more training mm -hmm. or anything. Yeah. You're just a spiritual yeah. leader. Also, Mommy, have you been helped? Yes, Miss Nancy. You have been helped. Uh, I have. I actually think uh, with a 17 year old girl in question, I actually started a bit of talking with her, mm -hmm. but not in terms of even bringing myself in as if I know what's going on. Yes. But to help her psychologically in terms of what she's thinking, because mm -hmm. her own was more of a threat and she is afraid. Yes. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate this. I am glad that we were able to give you a little bit of help. But the help doesn't end here. You need more, and we are ready to direct you to all the right people, the professionals that can help you keep your home and the church of God intact. People, we end with you knowing that the men of God are also the sons of men. Good evening.